Friday, March 22nd, and the Team of Rivals podcast is live. Tonight, Ron Elliott and I will talk about Justin Turner's wrist, Alex Cobb signing with the Orioles, Shohei Otani, will he be up or down, developments in minor league baseball, and Carson Kelly is going to Memphis. The Team of Rivals podcast starts now. <laughs> Smith corks one into right down the line. It may go. So crazy, folks. So crazy. There's a drive. Way back. It might be. It's going to be. Yeah. We're going to high drive into left. Back towards the crane. He's at the track. He has it. He's a part of the world champion for 2011. A little bounce is slowly toward Bryant. He will glove it, go to Rizzo. It's in time. And the Chicago Cubs win the World Series. This is the Team of Rivals podcast. No insiders. No anonymous sources. Just passionate analysis from the bleacher seats. Here are your hosts, Ron Nuttall and Peter Geddes. All right, guys. So this this week is to start this off. I'm going to start this off on a positive note here. Um, I am basically in an oversized canoe going upstream and paddling with a fly swatter. Hang on a today. second. Is, is this a, a metaphor or is this literal? This is literal. <laughs> what the hell are you doing in a canoe at the end of March <laughs> with a fly this, swatter? <laughs> well, it's warming up here, and so uh, those things are those things are out right now. But no, uh, okay. So I w- it's a metaphor. Um, this day has been just chaos, and chaos as far as just busyness being from point A to B to C in a matter of seconds. In fact, just as the intro was ending, I plopped back down in my chair and barely remembered to turn the camera back on. <laughs> <laughs> that's but, what the silence was that's right that's what the confusion was usually i talk before the music is even over but here is it's my mind catching up to the moment um the other thing guys is that uh as all of us right all of us are, are near in age as we all rocket towards the uh acceptance the, 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 si- the silent surrendering of old age yeah um i just care less and less about what people think about my appearance, about what comes out of my mouth, but it never uh, goes into your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. The thing is, the truth is, I really didn't care about that years ago. Um, yeah, it's just but, something different now. Right. So, I guess a point I'm getting to is that um, <laughs> tonight, my my son played a, a little league game. Seven, eight year olds. Right. Uh, there's no, no no scouts in the stands yet for those kids. Um, and ESPN's cameras are not there and they're not on, but it never ceases to amaze me that some coaches, some parents just cannot help themselves to take that so seriously. And, 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 and Pete, we've talked about this before, um, on the show about some people just don't have a social filter like you should feel ashamed about how you're behaving but you don't and we all have to deal with those people every day and so i dealt with one tonight um there is an official usa bat stamp that that seven eight year olds must have on their bat or they're they're yes. they're not they're not they're not legal and that's fine we, we, we get it right um my son has one but there happened to be a couple of kids on the team that did not have that seal on their bat now they they, they meet the length and the diameter and weight required the, the weight you know um, they call it the drop you know it's got to be so many ounces below the length of the bat right. um and, and and so it, it all fits that it just didn't have the stamp on it and there was um the uh, opposing team had a helping coach not the main coach that was checking all of my kids bats as they left home plate and um your kids cheating we're talking about kids right we're talking about seven or eight year olds Right. And, and if you guys are familiar, like there, okay, yes, there can be a mutant or two out there that are way bigger and way right. more advanced, but not on my team. And so, um, as he's checking bats and reporting them to my own coaches and, and the umpire, 
at, at some point when they got up nine to one, I had to call him out on it. And um, Pete, you know me well enough that uh, I'll, I'll, I'll give you, I'll give you, I'll give you some leeway. But at some point in time, you just you look at people and like, man, how can you not feel stupid about what you're doing right now? How can you just not feel stupid about it? Do, do you not feel ashamed in front of other adults? The kids won't notice, but in front of other adults, don't you feel ashamed checking every bat as they come up? You're up nine to one, man. You're up nine Wait, to one. Winning? They were winning and he was doing He's this. still checking the bats. Right. Uh, uh, human beings, please listen up. There's got to be at some point in time, you have to be socially aware that you look like an asshat, like a genuine asshat. You should feel <laughs> bad about yourself that you're <laughs> you're monitoring seven or eight year olds. I'm sorry, but whatever production they get off their bats is not because of the bat. If you've ever known a seven or eight year old, they're not built like Alex Rodriguez right now. OK, it's not Sammy Sosa with cork. There are seven and eight year olds. They're more interested in what they're in playing Nintendo or on an iPad later. Get a grip, you son of a bitch. And I, I don't know if you're a listener to the show or not. I doubt it. But you should, like, seriously have a conversation with yourself. Have an argument with yourself facing the wall or, or pushing a shopping cart around barefoot, having an argument. Because you're, you're – what a jackass. <laughs> I, I, thought, I, thought the whole, I thought the podcast group should hear about this tonight. Because I tell you what, if you know one of these people – don't be afraid to confront them and tell them, you know what, you should be ashamed of how you're behaving right now. It's just ridiculous. And it makes it makes everybody else not just uncomfortable, but it makes us feel worse about us as a human race that we, we, that we, we deal with this kind of shit, that, that this petty nonsense. They're kids. We're out here for the kids. We're not here for you so you can judge and monitor and like, get the hell out of here. Get out. I don't know the guy's name. I don't want to know his name. If I did know, I, I would say it on here, live. I guarantee you I'll talk to more people tonight than he will. <laughs> anyway, done with that, man. we got a week left before real baseball starts, and then they can start yeah. checking bats. They can start checking bats in real baseball because that's when it matters. When Make sure people. those suckers aren't corked. Yeah. Right. Damn right, man. That's, I'm off it, guys. Mortality's <laughs> real to me right now, and I don't care as much. And then there are people like that. That's my Thursday. Guys, how you been this week? Everybody, welcome to the Team Arrivals Podcast, Season 2, Episode 16. It's off to, it's off to a smashing start. <laughs> it's a good me. thing that Ron is, uh, is feeling so laid back and relaxed tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was, man. I'm an easygoing guy. I, I, I want to I no, I, I drink beer with other people, tell fart jokes and stuff. I don't like deal with stuff like this. I don't care. I'm, I'm pretty tonight. sure if you wouldn't have had your hat on, you probably would have had a vein popping out of the top of your head. <laughs> <laughs> you know but i I'm, I'm a lot more mellow at, at this age i really am because it would my uh tolerance for that was would have been so much less a decade ago um i just let him go on forever but when he started talking to me and he's about three feet away, not talking to me he was talking to his own head coach which his head coach of his team didn't care neither one of us were going to check each other's bats we're, we're coaches of seven and eight year olds i felt sorry for that head coach because he had to deal with this guy and um as he was talking, pretending I'm not standing three feet away, that's when I had to confront the situation, especially when they're up that much. I'm like, shut up, man. All right. That's a, that's the, no, no, nobody, nobody's tuning in right now to hear me talk about that. So let's talk about some baseball, guys. Baseball. Well, wait. Before we dive into baseball. Take I'm, us to I'm, it. I'm just thinking, you know, maybe we could tell people where they can find us on the web. What do you think, Ron? That's how emotional that's Ron idea. is. He's completely forgotten the show format. <laughs> <laughs> did, the show, did the show have a format? It has had a consistent format forever. Look, it go did. Ahead. It did. I know. I've, did. Torpedoed, I've torpedoed it like two weeks in a row. So. <laughs> so anyway, if you want to find out more about us, teamofrivalspodcast.com, and you can contact us by email at the show at teamofrivalspodcast.com. And then we're all over the social medias, Facebook, Instagram at Team Arrivals Podcast, Twitter at Team Arrivals Pod. And if you want to say hello to that handsome bearded face on the other end with the red headphones, you can reach him at T O R underscore Elliot. That's E L L I O T T. And as I mentioned last week, if you uh, if you want to help us keep this thing going a little bit by contributing to us, you can do so for free. By logging on and downloading or listening on the web to the free Radio Public app. 
uh, new listeners get us a bonus after the third episode that they've listened to. And then every episode after that just uh, racks up the pennies until finally we're able to buy Ron a beer, maybe. And there's one more way that you can that you can uh, support us. Hang on just a second. I, uh, oh, my God. I, I have a phone oh. call here. Oh, no. Hello? <laughs> oh, oh. Oh. oh, it was a hang up. But okay. you can get Team Arrivals merchandise at, say it with me, Elliot. Zazzle.com. <laughs> There's a wide range uh, of Team Arrivals podcast merchandise available. Hats, t-shirts, iPhone cases. Um, I like my case better. Maybe, maybe uh, cups. Mugs, uh, tumblers. Um, there was another item on there at one point that we took down. Um, which one's that? Uh, undergarment that you had put on oh, there. That's right. <laughs> that might be coming back. It depends. Um, <laughs> If you just go to the website at teamarrivalspodcast.com, there's a link. There is a link, right? Ron? Yeah, there is. There is a, there's a link the website to, uh, says to team our store, store at, uh, at Zazzle. So. Yep, team store. With well, that, go. gentlemen, what do you say we actually get into the show, huh? It took a while last week, man. It was like a record. We, like, we didn't talk baseball until 20 minutes in, and we're damn, we're 12, so we're, we're doing better this week if we get we're there. We're way ahead of time. We are, yeah. we are cruising. Yeah. Yeah. So, gentlemen – what looked for a second like a breakthrough, an opening for uh, other teams in the National League doesn't look so much. Justin Turner broke his wrist. Yeah, and uh, it, did any other person, at least at, at certain points of time last year, carry a team like he did? Like, where would? Oh, no. I mean, I mean, that, they, that had, was they had great last year, right? Right. I mean, they had they had good pitching right late in the year. They had um, mm-hmm. early in the postseason, at least they had they had still had good pitching. But I tell you what, if he wasn't in that lineup, what a different outcome. Right, the, the Cubs might have been in it again last year. At the end, um, he he killed them last year during the playoffs. I mean, I know, that yeah. guy set, he set the tone. Uh, he, it was either a double or he was hitting home runs. I mean, the guy is unbelievable. Plus, his defense is awesome. Right, and so, is there any is there any other player if you met him on the street if he wasn't in his garb, he wasn't in his hat or uniform or anything like that? Is there any other player in the league that you would look at and be more shocked that he's actually a professional athlete than Justin Turner? Oh wait, a professional athlete or a professional baseball? Player? Okay, fine. We'll, we'll we'll narrow down professional baseball player. Is there any other person, active player, right now that you walk down the street, look at physically, and go, nah? Or you just like be like head over, like what the hell? You can't be a professional baseball player. Well, the only, I got, other, only other one I could think of is Cologne, right? Bartolo Cologne still. I mean, not, he doesn't have a team right now, but he's still active, right? No, wait. Right. With the Rangers, didn't he sign with the Rangers? Did he? Yeah, yeah. he's probably not going to make the team though. Ah uh, man, I, I, it's going to be weird not seeing Big Sexy back in the league this year. Don't I mean, call him Big Sexy. <laughs> oh, I, I love that nickname. That is my favorite baseball nickname. Really? I, I love it. I didn't know I that. I thought until... your favorite baseball nickname was The Last Jedi. That That's not a nickname. <laughs> it's not a nickname. It's not no, a nickname. That's Kyle, Kyle Schorber. It's not Come a on, you know that. You nope. know that. No, nope. he's, nope. he's Burger King. That's what about what Kylo Hendricks? <laughs> Kylo Hendricks? Obi Wan Zobris? No, that's that's bullshit. I, I I tell you what, guys, I do kind of like Kylo Hendricks. I think that's kind of that, that's uh, I, I that, that's that's the one maybe exception I'll make because I I like that it fits very well. But no, not not Obi Zobris, whatever bullshit. No, I, I will tell you the two um, the two players who I think if you saw them walking down the street uh, that you would be surprised that they were professional baseball players. Actually, one of them no longer is, but last year I think you probably would have been surprised if you ran into Kyle Schwarber on the street and somebody had told you he was a professional baseball player because, you know, beer league softball. Uh, and then the other one who I would be totally surprised by, Charlie Blackman. Dude oh, does not look like yeah. He looks like a freaking homeless man. <laughs> <laughs> Pushing a shopping cart barefoot. Um, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I, I I can't argue with that. Now, Zobris, or not Zobris, uh, uh, Schwarber looks like he maybe was a hostage and just got released. And that's that explains the weight loss, <laughs> the body transformation. I mean, I just wanted to yeah. see him at the end with a newspaper just to prove he was alive with a date on it <laughs> before before he uh, arrives back at camp. Um, all right, guys. So we, we had a we had a list. I don't have it up in front of me. Uh, Justin Turner's broken wrist. Are we done with that one? I mean, well, well, it's funny. You know, you you initially thought when you heard it, like minimum six weeks, right? Yeah. But apparently, it's a non-displaced fracture, so uh, you have to think that he's going to come back sooner than that. I'm, 
I was initially thinking that the Cubs might miss him the first time that they would uh, face the Dodgers in. I think it's June, but it looks like he's going to probably be back by May. So that's unfortunate. And you don't have to worry about him at all uh, because the Cardinals don't play the Dodgers for the first time until August. But well, either that's, way. That's because du- that's because Duet knows Manford really well and was <laughs> yeah, lining that probably, up way before. That's yeah, actually, he actually, Duet actually arranged He's, the wrist breaking. Did he? Okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, what that will do is it'll allow some teams to uh, create a little space between them and the Dodgers so that when the Dodgers inevitably get on their hot streak, that uh, there'll be a little cushion. <clears throat> Cubs. <laughs> How many? What was that? What was that stretch of games they won last year? It was like ridiculous. Like they lost. Like oh, what the was Dodgers. They, yeah, they, they went on a ridiculous run right before the Indians went on theirs and completely overshadowed them. No, no, I'm talking about the Dodgers losing streak. Like they went on. Oh, a, their like, losing a, streak. Oh, oh yeah, it's like twelve. It's like twelve games, I think. Right. And then you look up, right? Yeah. And you look up, and there's still forty games over five hundred. Yeah, like, right. Yep. Yeah. You know, um, yeah. The, that's that's insane. So uh, I, I didn't think much of this, Pete. To be honest with you, I mean, I know he, I know he, he's a huge, huge part. He's a huge cog in that wheel. And anytime you disrupt that, it's it, it's going to be noticed, right? It's it's going to be noticed for a few weeks. But if he's back that quick, then the impact will be uh, lessened. It'll be lessened. It, it'll it'll be minimized. I mean, that, that's still. I mean, minus him, that is still a pretty formidable lineup. And from what you hear at least from what I heard on MLB Network Radio yesterday morning, was that uh, Matt Kemp is in great shape, and he may surprise yeah. and, and steal some time in the outfield. And well, um, That's the best possible outcome for them, because if he does, then he becomes a viable trade piece. Yeah, or he makes somebody else a viable trade piece, like well, somebody like I, a queen. Yeah. Or, you know, I right. don't think that happens. Well, well, yeah, maybe. Who knows? Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. There's, there's a lot of it's there. But you know I, what? It's you know, amazing. It's amazing. Right. It's amazing that that we, we, you know, you hear these guys talk about Jacques Peterson being a platoon guy at this point, right? Remember the hype? Of, remember the hype <laughs> right. of him like two, yeah. three years no, ago? He, he was going to be the starter, right? He was taking. He was taking over. You may be right about about Puig being a more viable trade piece than uh, than Kemp because Puig, unless I'm mistaken, is in the last year of his contract. Yeah, so it would be the perfect. Time yeah, to but Puig is your friend, so. <laughs> Oh my friend, <laughs> bat licking weirdo. Um, yeah, yeah. He's he, uh, guys. I don't know about this, right? But I, I, the only other uniform I can see him in is Marlins. That would be perfect. It would be right. That would be. Oh, he'd, he'd love he it would, down there he, too, he, and he'd be great for that region and that team. Yeah, I think, absolutely. Right. So, and and then you and then you uh, trade for Jonas Cespedes. You get the two big Cuban uh, Cuban stars huge. on the team. It'd be Start huge. Building that team yep. back. Yep. Be huge. Derek, you listening? I know I know he's downloaded before. Yeah. <laughs> Derek is our friend. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Alex Cobb finally signed. Alex Cobb. I can't Yay. wait to talk about uh Alex Cobb not signing with anybody yet again next week. You know Where's that from? I, I often be clown myself. Uh <laughs> do, do you want me to play it again? Hold on. You might as well. I can't wait to talk about uh, Alex Cobb not signing with anybody yet again next week. <laughs> you it's said not that often I'd be clown myself in less than seven days. <laughs> you said that last week. Said that hold, on, I, I, week. I, I, hold on. Hold on. One I more. can't wait to talk about uh, Alex Cobb not signing with anybody yet again next week. Hey, Ron, can you do me a favor? Uh, I, because as soon as I uh, – I want to set this up, okay? Um, probably your most played uh, audio clip, the Stephen A. clip. Can you play Cobb and then follow it up with Stephen yep. A.? Because that was my reaction when I read that Cobb had signed. I'm all over it. I'm all over it. I can't wait to talk about uh, Alex Cobb not signing with anybody <laughs> yet again next week. <laughs> that was- Exactly. That that was beautiful, <laughs> beautiful. It yeah, was. there we go. Yep. I do have to give myself credit. I called myself out on that as we were prepping for the show. You too. Today. You haven't been shy about doing that. You, and, you've, and and I yeah. cut that audio and threw it up in Slack so that it was ready to go for Ron. But you know what? It also to to give you a lot of more credit. Our off season predictions last year. You cut more of your clips <laughs> out than mine. Because mine were further <laughs> off. No, no. Well, maybe, maybe I was being a, a hell of a lot more cautious than you were. But probably. Um, but yeah, no. I, I give you credit for that mid-season. Was it mid-season? 
It was like what? a mid-season assessment. I think it was a mid-season assessment, which is why I can't wait until next week's show when we make our predictions because I am cutting that one all apart. That <laughs> one's going to be ready to go. <laughs> I, I, I don't. I don't like. I don't like looking. I don't like looking back and sh- that much shame on predictions. So I'm really, really <laughs> light on my bravado on those things. Um, but again, I'm, I am getting older, so maybe you know, I don't care anymore. But um, look how dumb I am. Uh, so yeah, Alex Cobb, Orioles. That's that's not a surprising sign. They, they, I really, I was surprised by that. Uh, well, I'm not. Well, I, they they've been looking for pitching the, this whole off season, and yeah. I, they they were doing like everybody else, and they were just kind of waiting back to see what deal could be made. Um, what was the Orioles' last big free agent signing anyway? Was it like Ubaldo I, Jimenez? I mean, what you know, like who have they brought in as a pitcher? In, in, in our recent memory, like what free agent aside from him? I'm drawing a complete blank. The, in Canada, the only one that I can think of is is the the trade that they made when they sent Strope and Arietta to the Cubs, and the Cubs sent over. <laughs> that worked out well for them. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, the only one I can think of, guys, is really Jimenez. It never worked out there. Yeah. So, you know, we've been critical about that that organization before on here that you know hey if there's one flaw they have and that is like what pitchers do they aside from mike musina maybe a reliever or two like they just cannot for some reason that organization does not produce pitching you would think that they would be more active in the free agent market given the offense they had and i think they're past the prime i think they're past the prime performance of the other offense they've had with jones and and uh, chris davis um i think i think that time has come and gone you'd think they would have been more active in free agent market pitching in the last several years and they just haven't Ron, um, you said for some reason the yeah. name of that reason is peter angelos yeah yeah that's right now that now that jeffrey loria no the, longer, the, one, the, the one that won't maximize the value of manny machado the the one yeah. who who now that jeffrey loria has sold off the marlins uh now holds the top spot for worst owner in major league baseball i agree i agree Yep. But it's always been a close race between those two. Terrible, terrible owners. Yeah. I mean, the f- uh, fact that he well, wouldn't commit we, when Cal Ripken was in his prime. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Peter Angelos, the only good thing that he's done for the Baltimore Orioles is build Camden Yards. That's yeah. And, you know, and I'll all say to Cardinals fans, like, hey, Cardinals fans, you know, we're not happy. We missed the playoffs two years in a row. Don't complain to Orioles fans. <laughs> or A's fans or, or national Seattle fans. Mariners or <laughs> Nationals, but national slash Buffalo Bills fans. Um, you know, you, you get Cle- there. You, Cleveland Browns fans. Cleveland Browns fans, man. That, that is a class of its own. We could do a whole case study on this show. Chicago about- Bears fans. <sighs> yes. It's been 30 years. How long can we, how long can the Super Bowl shuffle sustain our affinity? For anything bare. Well, uh, for those of us who are Cubs fans, it no longer needs to. <laughs> Shut so be up, careful man. when you Shut say up. anything sure. bare. Uh, but but seriously, anything bears, like like Cubs, Cubs <laughs> no, are bears. Oh no 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 no. Yes, they if, are. They're bears. If look at the logo. I get it. I get what you're saying. <laughs> but anything football bears, like how long? Like at what point in time in your life, if football was your number one, yes, does finally the Super Bowl shuffle start to piss you off? <laughs> no, it just it just sends me into a state of deep melancholy. Yeah, but we stopped talking about baseball. We did again, man. Yes. We, <laughs> that's just what the offseason does to us, guys. I know. Right. I I can't right. wait. Although I was I was very interested to see which would end first, the off season or or spring training. And I guess with the signing of Alex Cobb, you'd say that the off season just barely nipped spring training. Although obviously there's going to be a flood of veteran free agents again because they're all going to get cut from their teams. But let's stick with Alex Cobb. Uh, yeah. Here's what I found interesting. Initially yeah. reported four years, sixty million dollars. He rejected the Cubs offer, and he did so much better. What a wise move by waiting it out. And then it was four years and $57 million. And then we found out about all the deferrals. And all of a sudden, all of a sudden, 
he has signed a contract in yep. in current dollar value yep. for four years and $47 million. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, well Elliot. done, Come on, Elliot. Alex Scott. Come on, Elliot. You get into this. Yeah. Yeah. Man. Yeah, it, it, Give it's, us it's financial here. advice, buddy. We want you. Yeah. We want you and your agent in our corner. Well Please. done, Alex. You rejected a a three year, what was it, twelve million dollar AAV contract with a World Series contender to sign a four year, twelve million dollar <laughs> AAV contract with a bottom feeder. You're probably <laughs> never going to be in contention for the playoffs over the length of that contract unless you get traded. And you're going to retire lonely and be pushing a shopping cart around. Well done. <laughs> yes, well, well done. And, and the next thing I want to talk about, you know, this I was sensitive about this one too earlier in the offseason, right? I mean, I don't even really know where to start um, about talking about this, but, uh, you know, there's major hype around some things. You know, some things immediately just gets, I think they get out of control. You guys might know where I'm going with this. Um, Damn it, is that louder than that? That is loud. Yeah, that's really loud. Okay, I'm sorry. Pa- apologize. We know how much you like it. I um, know that Sarah immediate- told me that you set that as your alarm. So when you wake <laughs> that, up in the morning. That, even wake, that would not wake me up. Um, Ron, Ron just bows and begins to greet the sun. Um, <laughs> guys, the, the media machine is just... It's how much have things changed? Like say, where where say are the name. say what? Say the name. Say Shohei it. Shohei Soso Otani spring training debut. Shohei <laughs> Fore Otani. Yeah. So you hey, know, maybe, but, hey, there you go. Maybe you should change his name. It could be Fore Otani. You know what? I mean, here's the thing. Like, I, I know this guy has like an insane amount of talent, and sure. I I am not rooting against him as a player. But the, the best thing for baseball would be for him to actually succeed in too well. And we all want him. To, we, we all we all want yeah, a story like yeah. that in baseball. I mean, guys, I who does not love Ichiro Suzuki? Who does not love what that player did? Who does not love that he looked like he was a third of the way up the first baseline before he even made contact with a pitch? I right. mean, the, the quirkiness of, of his style of play – Um. The fact that he came over here later in his career and still had three thousand hits in the major leagues, I mean, he's 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 a beloved character in baseball. Um, he will be in the Hall of Fame. I mean, I think a first ballot Hall of Famer, oh, yeah. no doubt. But what irritates me about this situation here is not the player; it is the way the baseball mainstream media have talked about this. It's just so. I mean, are there no other stories to talk about? Is there nothing more interesting to talk about? But they have, they have, it basically, the media has written checks this guy can't possibly cash in his first year. Now, maybe he surprises us all. Maybe he holds reserve back in spring training and he lets it all go in, in the regular season. I doubt it because he's trying to establish himself over here and prove a point. He's playing a different game now. This isn't. Yeah. This is Japanese baseball. This is this is U.S. baseball. It's different. I mean, there there are some yeah. there, there are some U.S. players that have struggled more over in Japan than than the U.S. Right? I mean, there's it, it is an adjustment. I just wish the media would just back off. Don't declare. I mean, here, here here's here's the image that set me off, guys, about this. Um, picture of just him in an Angels hat next to the world series champion Houston Astros, right? <laughs> what, what media outlet what? was stupid enough to do that? Cause you just, the, the docile Houston fan of four or five years ago, you just pissed every one of them off by doing that. You, you, you put, you put the contention that the future of the angels on the shoulders of a guy who's never taken one swing in the regular Major League Baseball season, never thrown one pitch. Media, stop your shit. Stop it. <laughs> stop it. Let this guy breathe. I mean, these mainstream mainstream media these days, they open up a bottle of wine, they just start chugging it, man. They don't let it breathe. They don't let it get good. They, they declare it's good before they even open the bottle. 
I don't know if that's a good way of putting it or not. No, I, like, I, like, I like that analogy. That I'm is a fired up, man. Analogy. I like this Ron tonight. We just anyway, need to say the no, right it, things. It, 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 to we, we, we talked. We talked about this at the beginning of the season when when Shohei signed with the Angels and everybody was declaring him the next best thing since yeah. sliced bread. They're going to be I contenders mean, now. They're going to be World Series contenders. And he, now and he right, and he hadn't even stepped on the the field, let alone spring training. I mean, just the other day, he looked like he was about to sprout antlers from his head when he went against Clayton Kershaw. So, <laughs> I mean, let <laughs> that 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 could that's a contender for the Joe title. Yeah, sprouting so, antlers. Just let let the guy play some baseball. Let him get to July. Let's get the All Star break before we start, you know, putting stamps in this guy's. <laughs> book anywhere just come couldn't, on couldn't well, agree really, more man couldn't agree more the really interesting thing that i thought was the assessment of some scout and i didn't i didn't pay attention to who it was but there was a scout who said that if they really wanted to uh if they really wanted to do him justice they'd send him down to triple a so that he could get used to american yeah. pitching in the way that american pitchers approach the the strike zone because it's different from japanese pitchers but they can't afford to do it yeah, and right. it's not because of a monetary investment it's because pr got, well it's pr but also it's you know they've got a hole in their in their starting rotation what do they you don't think have a good five man, they have a good, they have a decent six man and if they take him out of it they got problems yeah what, what do you think would be worse though them sending him down at the beginning of the season <laughs> Or sending him down in the middle of the season because for me it's sending him down in the middle of the season if he's struggling. Right, that, that, absolutely. That, that, that telegraphs like, oh shit, guys, we missed on this one. It's a failure, right? Yep. He's not going to work here. Right. Um, whereas if you do it now, you've got, hey, look, there's an adjustment, and sometimes we rush these new players to the league. Right. We rush them up when they're just not ready to do it yet. They've got to get ready. To, they've got to get acclimated to this style and this culture. And, and this yeah. culture, exactly, right? I mean, yeah. so look, I, I, I actually personally, I really feel bad for the guy that all this hype was put around this, and it was unavoidable, maybe. But um, media, go suck one, really, go do it. <laughs> suck go do it, rotten egg. You guys are shameful. If you weren't <laughs> creative, you weren't creative enough to dig up another story, and all you could put out was this Shohei Otani make the Angels contenders now. Or a Otani. Guys, Until further notice for a Otani. So so hey, spring debut Otani. So so hey, not so so. So say so so. Uh, I'm, I'm just gonna stop. Hey, I'm hey, hey, hey I, stop. I, I know I know this wasn't on the docket tonight, but I think I think we've pro polished this one up. Um, <laughs> <laughs> hold on. How, how, how is that? Wait going? wait wait. wait. <laughs> did, did we that one up like that? Is that what we were doing right there? <laughs> kind of. <laughs> yeah, at first, on. I thought we might be polishing a turd, but yeah, we, this, whole show, <laughs> this whole show and it's not working. It's not working. It's just smearing all over. That's because you can't polish a turd. <laughs> um, guys, I gotta ask you this: How's how's the Palmero come back coming along? <laughs> <laughs> How did that drop off our radar? Is what I'd like to know. I'm more disappointed in us not wanting to talk about it anymore. How, how is how is Rafi's comeback? How how is that uh, how is that progressing? I'm sure it's just a matter of time before he signs on. He's gonna find a team. <laughs> he will. They might be in Japan, but he'll find a team. You find a team where, like Independence League, like uh, Minnesota Japan, Saints, I right. think all Saints, Japan. I, you know what, guys? I, I would love. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I so badly wanted to see a spring training at bat with him. I really did. Boy, Ooh. speaking of spring training at bats, oh my God, Ron! I don't know if you saw it, Elliot. I'm sure you did. There was a, there was a. Uh, uh, hit from just the other day or maybe it was today did you see this the uh the i forget who it was who hit it damn um i, I was i was traveling today for work so i didn't get to see anything uh, oh this afternoon. okay i'm gonna find it keep working this right. was amazing from one of the from one of the games this afternoon are you sharing a screen i'm going to in a moment 
once I find the damn thing. Well, sorry, audio listeners. Maybe we'll we'll provide a link. We will we'll provide a link because this was amazing. We'll throw it up on Twitter. Yeah, and we'll throw it up on Twitter and, and you guys uh, got you guys gotta film me. We we, we gotta revisit Twitter before we leave here too. You guys were talking about something earlier tonight. I, I have been Twitter absent. We were talking about something? Are you sure? Uh yeah. Uh, before before we before we out. oh yeah oh yeah oh sorry wrong wrong content <laughs> keep no never mind there's nothing to see here move on yeah move along move, move along, along. Mm-hmm. these are not, not the droids, droids you're looking for, for. <laughs> are we playing something peter or are we just I'm, no I'm i told you i gotta find it first all right okay so so we can talk about something else while i'm working on it well, our interest is getting flaccid on this, so maybe we should move to the next. Uh, maybe we should uh, polish it a little more. <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Um, I know that uh, there's some rough news if you're a minor leaguer. Um, kind of brutal. I mean, the Cardinals had a story about this too with one of their minor leaguers chose retirement um, rather than sticking with it because financially it's just not feasible for some to hang on. <laughs> So what, how do you guys feel about their pay basically staying the way it is? <laughs> well, it, it, well, it's it, not it, just it, the way staying the way it is. They actually managed to get written into the omnibus uh, spending bill that's before yeah. Congress mm-hmm. that baseball – could make it permanent. Right, that specifically baseball has an exemption from uh, minimum wage and overtime laws. Right, uh, because technically minor league players are considered apprentices – and yep. they are not liable to these laws that protect work uh, American workers, so they don't have to be paid up to minimum wage. So a lot of these MILB players are only making eleven hundred dollars a month. I mean, yeah. <laughs> you can't, and and, that, and you know what? You can't. These guys are below poverty level. I mean, it is ridiculous that. This is the way these guys are being treated. So, you know, I, I honestly, I have mixed feelings on this. Uh, and here's why. Yeah. Um, the minimum wage thing, I get it. You know, if, if, if these guys can't play baseball, especially with the expectations that are placed on them to stay in shape, to get bigger, to put in extra time in the batting cage and in fielding practice and everything outside of the games. Um, you know, when you total it up, you know that they're not getting compensated properly. However, I can absolutely see exempting minor league baseball players from overtime because at what point are you going to say that they worked a full day and now they're doing overtime? I'm, I can see that right. being really taken advantage of. Well, and, and where do, what, what, at what level of baseball do you start paying these guys a livable wage? Is it, is it double A? Is it triple A? I mean, obvi- obviously, I can see triple A being that's kind of where you max out before you get to the to the major leagues, and obviously, you're a really good player if you make it up to the triple A. But yeah, I mean, you can't with like, the the rookie balls and the the, the the couple of single A ball. I mean, yeah, I mean, you're not you can't pay these guys fifty grand a year for every single player on every single one of those teams. I, I mean, yeah. Where, where, where is the line there, where that you have to draw? Where it's like, okay, you know, we can continue paying these guys that much, but there's not as much as a demand for those guys to. I, I, I don't know what the answer is there. Well, I, I, would, I think the toughest thing, like, if you look at guys that are late bloomers, like um, if it got that bad, you wouldn't have people like, you know, the Tommy Fams. Yeah. Right. That that that. Or, or Jose Martinez, for that matter. And bo- I know I'm referencing both Cardinals. But those are the ones I'm most familiar with because though they came up later in their careers, you know, late 20s. Um, and, and Jose Martinez bounced around a little bit. But I, really, it's you, well, have, also, you have you have I to mean, have a no. circumstance where you almost don't have a family. You're just kind of single, kind of like have minimal living expenses, and you can stick it out. But if you're in your mid to late 20s, you start a family. That's Man, you, you you're starting to look at other options, I think, right? And, and so baseball risks, I think, losing losing talent, uh, losing late bloomers. I mean, right, guys? Do you disagree with that? No, I don't disagree with that. Um, but you know, th- the other problem that you have is 
are you not taking into account the guys like Chris Bryant who signed multi-million dollar? Now, granted, Chris Bryant wasn't in the minors for very long, but he signed. He signed you know, a ninety multi- million dollar contract with Adidas before he even right. Made and it he up got a majors. huge bonus, you know. Right. So, and I'm sure that that's probably part of the argument that that Major League Baseball is making is. You know, you want us to pay all these guys a minimum wage, but we've already paid some of these guys millions of dollars before they've even stepped on the field. Yeah, and so some, some and of so, right, right, right. So, and our expectation is is that that's going to balance out over the years, and it's going to compensate them for the lack of pay that they have while they're playing minor league baseball. But you're right, the guys like well, your brother in law, right, and yeah. the guys who kick around in the minor leagues for years before they finally get their break. They're not making anything and they're having to take second jobs. And if they want to start a family, uh, if they want to do something with their lives, at some point they're going to hit that, that inflection point where they have to make a decision. And yeah. it's I'm sure a very difficult decision because they're good enough that they're on the verge. Yeah. And, and I, 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 don't, I don't know what, I don't know what he, I, I can't remember even what year he was drafted. I think it was 2004 maybe. So I know rules were, were, were a lot different then. Um, I don't know what the terms of his, his deal were, but, you take guys that that kind of go low, low rounds. I mean, Albert Poole signed a thirteenth. He was drafted thirteenth round, right? Right, and and you, you look at guys like that, like you risk the potential of losing guys that are drafted that low. I mean, yeah, that you know they they get into their second or third year, and yeah, life happens, and and you risk losing things like that. The other thing, guys, if you look forward, I mean. Young athletes in high school choosing a sport, choosing one to stick with. If they look at if they look at baseball as being, hey man, I have the potential of being stuck there in the minor league system that doesn't pay well, and I see this in the in the media that guys retire earlier because they're just no they they pay sucks. They, yeah, they, they, they can't they, afford, they, they can't afford to live. If they choose another sport, so I think that's the biggest risk in all of this is that if if if, if the notion is out there or the thought that you know, um. If you get stuck in, in a major league baseball minor league system, or if you get drafted by a team who has a really thick and deep organization already, and there's no there's no line of sight to me even making it up in the next four or five years, I'm I, I'm going to choose another sport, especially if you're like a multiple sport athlete, right? I mean, would you not do that if you if you were if you were a great basketball player and a good pitcher? What are you going to do? Yeah, but do we ever see basketball players and and baseball players? I mean, it's it's exceedingly rare. Michael Jordan. <laughs> you just proved my point. <laughs> it's the only it's one. far more common for it's the, the, the only sport. one I can come up with. Right, it's far more common for the dual sport athlete to be a professional baseball and football player, or at least aspire to be. Right. Yeah. I mean, Tim Tebow. Yeah. How, how much of a fastball oh, could Le- LeBron throw with his six foot seven frame or whatever, like seven yeah. foot frame? 284 pounds. Imagine if that guy ever learned how to throw a baseball. That could be something. Yeah. Or he could be Kyle Firensworth. <laughs> okay. <so. laughs> right. yeah, good point. Good point. Good point. Good point. You neutered that whole – you neutered my whole angle on that one quickly. Absolutely. That's yep. what I do. I neuter. Yep. Yep. <laughs> All right. So here we go. You ready? Yep. Uh, I finally found it. This okay. happened today. Rob Ref Snyder. Rob Ref Snyder. Rob oh, Ref Snyder hit the most unique ground rule double that I have ever seen. Here we go. I, I don't know All if right. you guys are going to get the audio here. You getting that? Marco, looking up. Yeah, but I don't see anything. Is, yeah. Is it a home you didn't run? see it? It's going to be nope. a double. Are you kidding? I says I'm screen sure. It's all blurred out. Yeah, it's all blurred out. Right. All right. Snyder's long drive to center went in that hole. Well, that okay. So the audio uh, it started you, showing up, but I think it was delayed. For those of you listening to audio, can you see it now? Oh, there, there we go. There we go. This is it. Well, Marco looking up, and that ball is—is is it a home run? It's going to be a. Did he go in that hole in the Yeah. Watch this on the fly. Just above the four hundred and ten foot mark, and Rice Snyder's long drive. Oh, <laughs> uh, oh, that is awesome. We saw it at the end, like man. That. I like it. Who who opened up that hole in the outfield just to get a picture? Right. I, I bet that's what it is. I bet it's it's a camera well for either a, a video camera or for photographers. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That was amazing. I I personally love that one. 
That was that was the highlight Thank of the you. day. That, that, Mike, that was pretty good. good. Thank you for sharing. It, it's it's in the it's in the hole. It's in the hole. <laughs> 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 so, Ron, not a whole lot of interesting uh, uh, chatter coming out of Cubs camp this week. I mean, they just look amazing, but. Shut up, but, man. Hey, hey, God. Can damn. you let me finish? Here we go. But All right. It's spring training, and you know how I feel about spring training stats. Well, you know how I feel about it. Uh, Chris Bryant had an interesting quote, though. I'm sure you didn't catch this, but he said he got goosebumps driving home last night because he was thinking about the Cubs lineup, and he's like, we could legitimately have everybody in the lineup hit 25 home runs. Like it's ridiculous. We could have our leadoff man hit thirty home runs. Because I I, I, pretty ahead. much Ian Happ has the job. Right, and he's going to he, be he's going to be the primary leadoff man until right. further notice. And if he gets five six hundred at bats at leadoff this year, he's probably going to lead the game off at least fifteen times this year with a home run, and that's just at leadoff. Elliot, save, Ron, or, or Pete, save, save that there. clip. Yeah, save flag clip. the tape. So, uh, so we're, yep. uh, let's see about 47 minutes into this episode, <laughs> right. make a right. note of that right now, 47 <laughs> into episode or season LH, two, episode L- six, L- 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 Elliot has Elliot a been this. 15 lead off home runs right. for Ian Happ. Yeah. And he has never been to this humiliating <laughs> look back on what you've said. Cause Pete and I have lived it. I declared the All Cardinals right. were absolutely a 90 win team. Did, where, where did he go? I see, I see his I see his avatar and he disappeared. I had to get a pen and paper so I could write this down. <laughs> okay. Episode <All> right. 16. <laughs> 47 <laughs> minutes. Awesome. It is it is it is humbling and humiliating. Elliot to hear your own voice declare something and then Ian Happ 15 leadoff home runs. Now now Pete what is the major? We, we have to look this up off I'm show. Going, I was immediately thinking, how many leadoff home runs did, I think, did Ricky Henderson have in his career? Well, don't ask Ricky. No, don't ask Ricky. <laughs> guys, guys, it, what, what, you know why we mentioned that? It's interesting because Hap leads to a Ricky Henderson conversation, and it's going. We're going to launch into a Ricky conversation now. Do you guys miss guys like hey, him? You know what? That's Ricky's favorite conversation about Ricky. Ricky. 81 career leadoff home runs. But but in a single season. In a career. In a career, he had 81. That's impressive. It, it really is. is. But do you guys miss players like him who are who are who promote themselves like Ricky did? Like I, I, I hated it it's, at the time. It's not, it's not the it's not the fact that he promoted himself that I miss. It's the way he did it. Because it was I, yes. so over the top and amusing. <laughs> yes, it was. And and when he broke the stolen base record and Lou Brock was in attendance, he made sure that <laughs> base was over his head, and declaring that now I'm the greatest of all time. Uh, was as a Cardinal fan, you know, you should be like fired up and pissed off about that. But if you look look at the whole situation, and you know Ricky over the years, it, that's Ricky. That's him. Right. He was he was never any different from that. He was consistent from his first day to his last day. It was it was Ricky. Talk about myself in third person. You know, looking back on that, I'm I'm no longer like mad or offended about that kind of stuff because I actually miss players like that because we just don't have guys like that anymore that we'll tolerate. Right? No, oh, you're absolutely right. So yeah. Who's the next Ricky Henderson? It's not Ian Happ. You don't think no. so? I've never heard oh, the guy oh, talk. You mean the way that he promotes himself? <laughs> right. right. Who talks about themselves in third person anymore if you're not a boxer? It's not a baseball player these days. Um, Bob Dole. Bob Dole talks about Bob Dole. Yeah, he's not really in the spotlight anymore, though. No, he's not. Is he still alive? Oh, I don't know. I feel bad if he's not. Me too. Nice Change job, the topic. Pete. Nice job, Pete. Hey, yeah. you asked if anybody talks about themselves like that. Boy, and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna bother. Are you, are you talking about the Bob Dole Saturday Night Live spoofs or no, he talked Bob about Dole, himself. <laughs> he did that. All right, all right. Yeah. Um boy, I, and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna share this one because we already shared the link online, but uh, because it was a throwback Thursday and uh uh what is it almost eight years ago on yep. a Thursday. 
Glenn Allen Hill hit a four hundred, a four hundred and ninety. Like you're, foot <laughs> you're it was not four hundred and ninety feet. There is no way that thing went four hundred and ninety feet. He hit it on top of a rooftop on the fly. That and that, and that, feet. and that coach, and that coach from tonight would have had his bat immediately after. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, he would have gone out there and grabbed it, and he would have had it pissing in a in a bottle. Exactly, taking blood, everything. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my God. The way he crushed that. And like I said on the post, I'm not normally one for bat flips, but that bat flip was 100% justified, man. I, I, he I know what you're talking that about. Baseball. And it did. Yeah. It did go up on a rooftop. And yeah, you should. You should. That's that. That is one of the times. Other. If it's a game, if a walk off game home run, like in a tight situation, if emotions is pouring out and you do it, no problem with that. If you hit one on a rooftop across the street, Oh my God! You have a free pass, man. Yeah, you, you can you can Pedro Serrano that around the bay. You carry it with you if you want. <laughs> Which would have been better? That would have been more classic if you just carried it around. That would be that would be amazing. That was a strange delay there. Oh, that's because I wasn't uh, expecting uh, you to uh, not uh, have something to say. Sometimes I pause. Remember, we talked about our early episodes. We had strange pauses. That was a strange pause. You brought it back, Pete. Thank you. Nostalgia. Well, yeah, you know, it is Throwback Thursday. Yeah, it is. It's always Throwback <laughs> Thursday here on the Team Morales podcast, live every Thursday. Here you go. Uh, 2003 mm -hmm. for the New York Yankees. Most home runs by a leadoff hitter leading off a game, 13. Second place by the same hitter. 12 home runs, 2007 with the Chicago Cubs. Gentlemen, I give you. Who is the, who, who is the, the Cub? Same guy. Sure. Really? Yeah. He hit 13 in 2003 with the Yankees. He hit 12 in 2007 with the Cubs. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you. Alfonso Soriano. Alfonso Soriano. Oh, yeah, that's right. He was a leadoff guy for a while for them. Yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. I totally forgot about that. So. Okay. Not entirely out of the realm of possibility that Ian Happ could hit 15. It, it is out of the realm of possibility. <laughs> Very he's, he, he, he's not going to hit 15 Shit. leadoff home runs this year. Elliot, I, I this, tell you this, what, one's, this one's going to come last, back, and it's going to be fun. I'm going to love it. Last, and last at 54 year, minutes, Ron year. says there's no possibility whatsoever. I hope. <laughs> yeah. Now I kind of hope <laughs> Because that's going to make for a great segment. When I'll we, sign up for that one, man. We, we lead good. it off with Elliot saying, I'm going to say Ian Happ hits 15 leadoff home runs. And Ron says, there is no way Ian. Actually, then we then we play an audio clip of Liam or, or Ian uh, Ian Happ's 15 home runs back to back to back to back to back. And then we play Ron <laughs> saying, there is no way. That's fine. I'm, I'm, I'm game for that. I'm game for that. I'm older now. We're rocketing toward mortality, man. I don't care what we're doing anymore. <laughs> Uh, all right, we had it. We had a. <laughs> this is going to grow into a really huge piece of paper. This post-it note is not going to be enough. That's not going. That's not going to hold the bullshit tonight. That was gonna no, <laughs> you, you uh, might. You might want to get a legal pad for the bullshit. <laughs> Next week, I'm going to have to get one of those old dot matrix uh, printer feeds that just keeps going and going and going. Exactly. And write down all the predictions. So while the Cardinals have actually. Uh, answered a little bit to the dilemma they have with Carson Kelly and, and Yadier Molina, at least going into this year, because Molina is still on the, he's, he's under contract for three more years. And guys, given the way he's performed this spring, that dude's not slowing down from last year. He's really not. He's looked great. Um, he's been playing great. And so Carson Kelly is going to, they think it's important for him to find regular playing time, which I don't disagree with that. He really does need to be in Memphis. And their AAA I think team. Absolutely the right move. Absolutely the right move. But but still, they've got Molina for three more years. I think they are still they're not out of the woods on how they solve this. I mean, it's Kelly really do you really keep a guy like that down for three years? That's a tough, it's a tough situation they have right now. And uh, what's going on in that guy's between the ears of that guy, what's going on? He feels like he doesn't have anything else to prove in, in AAA. And no. I it's hard to argue. So what's gonna happen there? And, and well, so, but but I, I I, can't, I don't remember if it was Matheny or if it was Moselak who who made the rationale. And mm -hmm. speaking of which, where the hell is Gritch? Gersh, whatever his name is. You oh, never I say Gr Gritch is, Gritch is in Toronto. 
whatever, your general manager. I never see your general manager mentioned in anything. You don't. I mean, you talk don't. about a figurehead. Yep. Anyway, yep. Uh, I don't recall if it was uh, if it was the bow tie or it was the baby, um, but one of them explained it perfectly. We're sending Carson Kelly down because he is Yadier Molina's backup. And we want him to be ready if we need him to assume the reins. And yep. he's not going to be ready to take over full time <laughs> if he's not playing. twice a right. week. Catching once a week. No. That's right. He needs yeah. to be catching five game four or five games a week so that if Yadi does break down, if he does get injured at some play at the plate or something, that Carson Kelly can come up and be ready to go. So this is not a case of Carson Kelly is third on the depth chart. He actually is <laughs> second on the depth chart. It's just that they need him to be ready to step up to be number one on the depth chart if he's called for, and that's not going to happen if he's playing at the majors and only catching the catching you know a couple games a week. So there you go, Cardinals Nation. You get uh, the insight of the Cardinals backup catcher from a Cub fan who actually couldn't have he said it better than I was going to. I mean, yeah. that's that was yeah, that was in depth analysis. But no, I mean that is that is a problem that we knew they were going to have to answer at some point. And so yes. It's answered now. He's going to start in Memphis, and he should. Don't disagree with that at all. Has to. And I don't think that that has anything to do with his ability. No, I don't either. If Yadier but, Molina wasn't the, there, he would but be. But the shame is what's going through. What's going on between the ears of this kid is that if I was with other another organization, I I, I would be playing MLB all year, right? I'd be and, up there. And, and I would hope that Matheny sat him down and told him that before they gave him the pink slip and said. Hey, buddy, we're sending you down to Memphis, but it's not because of the way that you played. It's because of the way you play, and we need you to keep that up. We need you to keep your skills, well, you know, to, sharp. To be fair, to be fair, he was three for thirty. Wait, or do you it, think Matheny just grunted that, at him? No, but isn't that the isn't that the reputation that Matheny and Mosellock and the entire Cardinals organization has developed in recent years that they just send guys down and they don't explain why they're doing it? It sure feels that way, and I don't disagree with that at all. I mean, I, I, I don't know what kind of dialogue goes on. None of us know, right? None of us know. We we only we only get tidbits from from media or or, or what they're willing to tell us. Yes, or, or who was it that that said last year that he never really knew yes. why it was Diaz. He never really knew why he had been sent down. Yeah, they didn't explain it to him. No, it was sent down. It was he was benched because you know he didn't get. Two hits. He wasn't well, two out but, of three. But but he was demoted. And Every and day. I think what 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 Pete's referencing is I don't really know why I was you know sent down to Memphis. Um, you you were sent down to Memphis because you were hitting awful. I mean right. you you were hitting awful, and there was a guy named Paul DeYoung that surplanted you. I mean he did. So Diaz is confusion is less confusing to us because you hit like shit, and you got sent down. <laughs> You know, and, and, and your defense was sketchy to begin with. Uh, although, you know, I like that guy. I mean, he was an all-star that year, and he wasn't he wasn't a bad player. But I wonder if it was lost in translation. If what he was really trying to say was, I wasn't told what I needed to work on in AAA in order to get back up to the majors. Th that could be. That could be right. Like, how do you get back up here? Maybe right. maybe that was the part that was missing. So, LA, you might you might be right. I mean, that might be that that may have been the part. Like. What did I do wrong? What do I need to do to get back up here? And at what capacity? Where do you need me? And like, and you contrast that with what clearly happened with Kyle Schwarber last year when they sent him down to Iowa. It was yeah. Kyle, we need you to take a mental break. So you you report at the last possible day to Iowa. Don't head down there right away. And then we need you to get back to being a hitter and stop being a slugger. You know what, guys? I mean, you may disagree with me on this, but I think – Here's my my thought about Kyle Schwarber, guys. I don't hate him, right? I don't hate him at you all. Just hate that he's the last Jedi. No, no, no. He's he, he's absolutely not the last <laughs> Jedi. Um, but <laughs> I mean, I I, 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 trolling, Ron. I admire his willingness to do something different because he had a shitty year, and he did something about it. And that that's a that, who doesn't admire somebody that's willing to make a change to themselves to put themselves in a better situation where they can su succeed in the capacity that the their, their their employer sees them in, right? They see him as an outfielder. It's his only fit right now. They've got Wilson Contreras behind the plate. He's not going to be a catcher, right? You got uh, Anthony Rizzo as a first baseman. You're not going to be there, so you have to be in the outfield. So he did something about it, made himself more athletic, lost weight, got in shape. 
I admire that. I really do. I think a lot of Cardinal fans that that just are looking at these players as human beings appreciate and, and, and admire the fact that somebody was willing to transform themselves to fit um, a role that their team said they needed them to be in. What irritates me about the whole situation is, again, I'll go back to the media, just like Otani. Guys, don't declare him a monster this year. Whatever this Twitter guy we follow or – you know, we follow on our podcast this Michael Sarami of Bleacher Nation. Yeah. Don't declare he's going to have a monster year. Please don't do that to him. Say you hope he will have a monster year. We love what you did. We think we think you're you've set yourself up to have the most success. We hope you do. We were with you. Don't declare. And I think when media people declare that somebody's going to be a monster. That's what rubs people the wrong way. Even your own car- Chicago fans are skeptical about that, right? They're like, "Don't, don't do that to him yet." Well, we've seen it too many times, right? Yeah. But you know what? All teams have. Uh, we, well, we, we've, we've all we seen believed this. it after you know the legend of Swarber started after the World Series in yeah, twenty. You can't do it. You can't. You I just mean, can't. Do everybody that to thought him. he was going to come back and be right. the monster hitter, and that's what he tried to be. He tried to be this monster hitter at the leadoff spot. And it backfired. Yeah. Uh, it, it and then it, it continued to get into his head. And if it, you know, from my perspective, it felt like he was just digging himself into a deeper and deeper hole. And that's when they made the decision to, hey, hey, man, you need to go down and you need to work on you. You need to do you, and you need to to stop, you know, trying to be what everybody won't, thinks you need to be. I tell you, the, the work he put in is impressive. I mean, it is. And we've seen it with a few athletes over our years. And we saw Lance Berkman when he came uh, back to the National League, when he came back to the Cardinals in 2011, he got himself in shape. All of a sudden, he wasn't fat Elvis anymore. He was like, <laughs> a little bit younger Elvis, which which I'm not being unfair because that was one of his nicknames as an Astro. Two packs um, a day Elvis, not, not four packs a day Elvis. <laughs> 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 right. Um but I admire the work he put in, but I really hate to see media guys like that declare that he's going to be a monster. It's just like not, it's, it's just not fair. I understand your enthusiasm. And you don't know that. Everybody I, under, thought I, un, I understand the enthusiasm and the want, yeah. but don't, don't declare hope express like, wow, this looks great, but just don't, don't put that out there because what you have is when you're public like that, you have other fans that will just like start putting sniper shots into you and, and 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 if he doesn't work out if it doesn't work you've set yourself up to just be an asshat right so don't do that don't do that and and guys and i know you, you you're probably not going to think this is genuine but i i really I, I wouldn't mind seeing him like progress and be like a, a, a pillar of that Cubs lineup. I mean, I think the, the work he's put in, I've admired so much that I, I hope he actually sticks and I hope he's actually a, a piece there for a long period of time. My worry, if I were you, would be that it's all going to flame out and this is going to be one of those stories that it, it never worked out. You know, that uh, there was just no place for him here. He ends up on the A's next year as a DH and then in three years from now, he's, he's no longer in the league. That's not what we want to see for a guy like that. No. I agree. That's, that's the most genuine I'll be. And I'm done after that. He's not the last <laughs> Jedi ever. You're right. Kylo Hendricks is. I, lo- I actually like that name. I'm sorry. Cardinal fans. <laughs> forgive me. It, it sticks because he's also sad. Kyle. Right, not he only. is. He's confused. <laughs> He's confused. Does he want to be a badass or a nice guy? He doesn't know. Right. So that's I think that's it, guys. I mean, that's what we were going to talk about. Yeah, that's it. Oh God, are we're we just going to drag it out for another half hour like we did last week, or are we just going to say thank you for listening, fans? You can catch us uh, online <laughs> at podcast. Last week, last week was brutal. You can. Uh, Contact us at the show at team of rivals podcast.com. We're all over the social medias, Facebook, Instagram at team of rivals podcast, Twitter at team of rivals pod. And that handsome Cubs fan on the other end of the internet. You can reach him on Twitter at T O R underscore Elliot. Hey, and if you guys ever have questions that you want to send uh, to us uh, for the show questions that you 
for some reason want to hear our opinions about, hit us up on those, you know, on our Facebook page, hit us up on Twitter, say, hey, I'd like to hear you guys talk about this during the show. We will put that into our show notes and we will talk about that. Especially next week as we start prepping for our season preview where the uh, failed future failed predictions will be coming fast and furious. Mm -hmm. So continuing with the walkout, uh, you'll be able to, you can hear us anywhere online where you listen to your favorite uh, podcast, iTunes, SoundCloud, Stitcher, Google play, uh, tune in. Uh, God, I know I'm forgetting something. And also our Spotify. newest ad, Spotify, Spotify. Thank you. Also our newest public. Edition, radio, radio public, a free podcast app that, uh, aspires to be something like uh like netflix and that it's curated and it also uses an algorithm so as you listen to more podcasts it actually recommends podcasts that you might want to listen to so you listen to us on there and maybe it'll throw you some uh some less stellar quality uh and less stellar content sports uh podcasts that you might not uh, have been aware of excuse me <coughs> anyway you listen on Radio Public, you uh, you find and support shows like ours. And when you listen to us, we do receive direct financial support every time you listen to an episode. Uh, so please do experience our show on Radio Public today and uh, download the app. We appreciate it. Thank you for listening. Ron, mm -hmm. it's been a pleasure, my friend. Yeah, it's been a pleasure. And uh, for those of you who have been following us on uh, the Facebook group, uh, we will have a Great show next week. We are actually teaming up with uh, Meet Me at Musual. Um, that's another podcast that's uh, devoted to uh, Cardinals talk, but uh, we're going to team up with them. We're going to talk a little bit about preseason, what we think is happening, especially, well, we get to the next week. We're, we're close to opening day, so we've had spring training mostly behind us. Rosters are, are pretty much defined at that point. So we're going to talk about that. Uh, Cub fans are going to be joining us, and uh, Cardinals Nation 24-7. Sometime in the near future, uh, you, you you may be getting uh, something that's devoted uh, solely to you uh, coming your way, and that's where I'll leave it, and I'll drop it right there. But, guys, this is my favorite thing to do the entire week. It's not going to work. It's not driving to work. <laughs> it's ending this show. It's ending it's this show. <laughs> it's, ending, check, it's, it's ending this show and it's successfully hitting this exit button. You sure it's not checking bats? Because it might be checking bats. Oh, that son of a bitch. Don't get me going on that again. All right. He's polishing them, right? That's right. <laughs> did I actually make that hand gesture? No, I did. Right. Polish, polish it up real nice. <laughs> hey, you can tell him to turn that thing sideways and, sideways and shove it up his candy ass. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Shots yep. fired. Yeah, shots fired. Absolutely. <laughs> All right, everyone. Uh, another successful uh, show has, is under our belt. Guys. Depending on how you judge success. <laughs> yeah. We're going to be together a lot next week. Uh, everyone, have a, good, have a good weekend. Great weekend, and we'll talk to everybody very, very soon. Bye, everyone. Seven days to baseball. Seven. I was waiting for Elliot to dump something in. He didn't. He failed. Uh, let's go. We're, we're exiting. Bye, everyone. <laughs>